Hey everybody, Dennis Wilburn, the Active Trend Trader. The market continues to stumble and bumble its way lower. You're going to want to stay with us through the end. I'm going to show you three tips on what you can be doing in a weak market to be a better trader when the market is strengthening. But first, I want to remind you that up in not that corner, but up in that corner, mm -hmm. uh, I have a pop up that says, you know, how you can join us at Active Trend Trading uh, with the Autopilot Trading Service. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and jump into today's session. I'm going to start off with a real quick recap of the market itself and, and also hit that first tip we were talking about. Uh, here's the spiders. Um, the S&P, as you can see, daily chart over here on the right, weekly chart here on the left. As you see, we have broken a longer term uh, uptrend line, and we're sitting at a past level of support. We'll see if we're going to break down below that. Uh, we had two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, a bearish engulfing pattern that has basically come to fruition. One of the ways to basically, I want to be, one of the things I want to know, is how close are we to an actual correction? Uh, correction starts technically when the we come off the high by 10%. I go up and grab the high to the today's low. As you can see, I'm only the S&P is only down 5.85%, 5.85%. So how's that compared to what the other indexes are doing? As you can see, it's not very pretty either. <laughs> Um, what about the Q's? The Q's are from its past high. Now, here's where you're going to, you know, basically dissect a little bit. We can go to the past high over here, but in reality, let's go back to the past high from last year. How far are we uh, down from that? As you can see, it is down 10.31% uh, to today's low. That puts it on the cusp, or you could qualify it as being we are in a correction with the NASDAQ. Uh, highlight here a couple of things. I posted a little short on the YouTube channel um, yesterday, a short that I showed you how to utilize the Fibonacci extensions, both in price and time to identify an area or a zone of interest, a target zone, if you will, when prices could potentially reach a low and what the lows were. And how do we do that? Let me grab this. I'll give you just a highlight. I measured from this high to this low. Then I measured back to this high. And then, I, then that provided me a projection down to a 78% extension and a 100% extension. Uh, I used the same high, low, high, then with the time extensions, and it gave me an idea of when price action could get down into this area. Now, could price action drop uh, down, in the, down to these price targets before the time, uh, 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 the time aspect? Sure, it could. I mean, if, especially if the market continued to weaken up. And so, but let's take a look really quick at what are the numbers. And as you can see, my price action on my 78% retracement or extension, excuse me, is 362.47. On a 100% retrace extension, it is 354.93. The expectation is, is that this zone will be hit somewhere between the 24th, the 26th is the exact uh, uh, symmetric move for this down move over here, the 26th or the 28th. So somewhere in that box. Uh, the way we're looking right now uh, today is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It could actually violate that 78% uh, extension uh, earlier than that at the current trajectory that it's uh, going on. But again, this gives us an idea of where the, the potential time and target is. If I get there early, if I'm trading this to the downside and I get there early, uh, I can basically look at taking some profit here. If I'm doing some puts or a, a bearish uh, uh, option trade or maybe trading the, uh, in this case, the SQQQ. 
uh, which I am, with our uh, autopilot trading members. Uh, and if we get down in there, I want to be taking a look. Do I tighten the stop on the other? So that's what we're looking at with that. What about IWM? So we are in correction on the Russell. What about the S, the, the uh, correction on the S NASDAQ? What about the S and the, what about the Russell? Go ahead and grab the same number there. Drop it down. Where? How far are we? We're down 16.4%. Clearly, the Russell is the weakest of the entities. And I did a projection, similar type situation here, where I came from my high, low. This is a classic move, a classic technical uh, bearish type move where we swing down, rally attempt, fails, and then drops down from there. Uh, to hit a symmetric move, we've already hit the first target there. We hit, and then the second target, the 100% is down here. If we need to, we'll expand the chart to look in here. Here's the 1618, or correction, 127 um, extension. That, if we violate the 100, that would be our next target down. What about the price time frame? What about the uh, time frame? Well, just throw on a fib real quick of the time extension. Grab that. You see that Fibonacci time extension? I utilize, very critical, utilize the same high, low, high. And I'll be darn. Look at that. Uh, today was the day when we were supposed to hit the, you know, somewhere between the 78 and the 100. And it came pretty darn close to hitting that. Um, now, we provide a little bit of margin of error in there. And so we're looking here when it said that basically from the 18th and the last day here is out at the 20th, which is, as they say, manana, tomorrow. And let me go ahead and if you're wondering how to take out that middle one, I'm going to take that out. You just hit the control uh, left click and I'll take it out. And we came pretty darn close to, you know, hitting that low right there. Uh, we'll see if we continue on down, but we are down 16%. So of the tracking indexes that we, we look at, two of them are in a, in a correction. And IBD is also showing that the market is in correction. So we agree. And so I would consider this to be, we are in a, you know, there's no reason to buy anything right now unless you get one heck of a great setup. Uh, so let me get this off of here, remove, and we'll leave that one there. And so that's one of the things that we'll be looking at. The other thing of note, of interest, is see what the longer-term uh, momentum indicators are doing. As you can see here, they're going down, they're going down still. Now, the positive side of that is that typically when these Weekly momentum indicators get down into the lower reversal zone. That oftentimes leads, after sometimes a pretty dramatic sell-off, leads to a heck of a good bounce. Could that be in play? We'll see. Uh, a couple of things. What could possibly drive that? Drive that. Uh, Great Britain just came out and basically said that they are eliminating all mask mandates, all vaccine magne, uh, uh, mandates. They are putting the British economy back to work. Uh, they also, in a news uh, release, they kind of admitted that uh, that uh, they were wrong in how they handled the, uh, the virus. Uh, and as we know, we have a split here in the United States about how different states have handled the virus. But, uh, you know, we have to also look at the facts. The, 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 uh, the states that did less mandates and less restrictions are the ones that have recovered, you know, economically and are back to where they were pre-pandemic. Uh, 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 pre so that's pretty interesting. The laggers, of course, are the states that had the harshest um, uh, tyrannical rules and mandates, kind of like what we have here in Hawaii, but I won't get into that. So what about some, what, okay, what about the tips? Well, a couple of tips that I wanted to be, chat about with really quick is 
But become a better trader when the market is just weak. There's no reason to risk getting into the market. I mean, it's, um, and when I say that, what, I, what I'm talking about is, um, is unless the market gives you a really darn good reason to jump into the market, there's no real good reason to get into the market. I mean, just, just, just stay out <laughs> and watch from the sideline. But while you're watching, sharpen your saw. What does that mean? Well, a couple of things. One, practice trading your trading system and refine it using the on-demand feature or a, smart, a, a trading simulation uh, program. I know that uh, 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 TD Ameritrade's uh, uh, trading platform, uh, Thinkorswim, has a fantastic market simulation uh, program called On Demand. Utilize that, practice it, get better at trading and recognizing when you need to take trades. Absolutely excellent. So that's one. What's, um, we already covered one of the tips is know where you're at in the market. And as you know, on two of the indexes, we're past a 10% correction. Therefore, we are, the market is in correction. Matter of fact, the Russell is only four percentage points away from being in a full-blown bear market. And last but not least, where do you find the best stocks? And in my research and my uh, uh, research of the Investor Business Daily, I believe that sometimes the easiest place to find great stocks is to keep it really, really simple. Go to the first IBD 50 watch list for the year. Hone in and focus on the first 10 to 15 stocks and how they're listed on, uh, and during the year, those stocks will tend to, again, it's not a 100% guarantee, but they will tend to outperform the market once the market turns back around. So uh, here are, now I'll just show them to you really quickly. Here are the uh, top five, Tesla, Google, BLDR, uh, AOSL, INMD, AMD, uh, SITM, CCS, uh, IT, and uh, SGH. And of course, if you would like to get a, you know, uh, I, I keep this running list. Every stock that appears on the IBD 50 list goes on my running list. I share that with our free memberships at uh, Active Trend Trading. And if you want to get into that, again, there'll be a link down in the description uh, of the, the uh, uh, video that will show you how you can join for free. Good stuff. So that's what we have. And while we're talking about uh, uh, the YouTube aspect, if you're darn not following us on YouTube, hey, subscribe, hit the bell, it's free. And I provide absolutely great content that uh, I've picked up over my 30 years experience in trading the market. Here's a couple of entities that we are looking, here's a couple of entity, one entity off this num top 10 list, is AOSL. Looks pretty darn good. Um, it is coming back down into a breakout area. So I'm going to watch this very closely. Uh, it, uh, longer term, again, yes, price, the, the, the momentum on the weekly chart is facing down. Uh, but on the market forecast daily, we have a three line cluster. Typically, what that means is sometimes between once you have a three line cluster, that's everything below the 20 level within a one to four trading period uh, trading periods you get a reversal now it can be from a lower level so we want to be careful with this but so I'm I'm looking I will put an alert on this somewhere between 45 and down here at 43 dollars in that zone right there that's where I'd anticipate a bounce recognize also though we are below the 50 day moving average and the other moving averages but above the 100 hence, uh, that's positive, but if we're below the 50, we want to be a little bit cautious taking a trade. But AOSL looks good for going forward. Now I'm going to give you a, a stock that I think has an opportunity to head down to the downside. Now it may not be a big, huge correction, but it is certainly struggling up here. See those long, and this is Zim. Zim had a good run last year, as you can see. 
You can see over here, it went from $10 all the way up to 61. So that's not too bad of a run. But as you can see, the momentum indicators on the daily chart are rolling over. We have a uh, long wicks on top saying the sellers are coming in. I would look at doing a trade on this, maybe a, 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 a bear call spread and or a just do a, a, a put debit spread. And you can pick up the 65 uh, put by 60 put um, and with the anticipation you're going to pull all the way down here to about 58-ish. Um, and put that out about two to three weeks uh, as an opportunity. I would not, you know, I'm not going to short, but if I'm going to trade something to downside, I'm going to be doing it with options. How, what is my trajectory down? Well, I can take my... Move down to there. There's one. Extended. Oops, wrong one. I want time extensions. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. So what is, if we had a symmetri symmetric move of that to that, that would put us down to about the 59.75 level. As you can see, price action picked up a little bit today and drove it down. Look for a pullback up into about 62.50 or so. And if it continues to hammer on the eight-day moving average, look for a fall all the way to the fifth, to the 20, which I'd say it would be probably up at about fifth, between 59 and 60 uh, over the next couple of days. Now, could we roll down, roll over and fall even further? Sure. But that shorter time frame, uh, I would anticipate, you know, no, not, not much more than 59.75, maybe the 127 extension of 58. So that's a potential trade coming up. So that's what we have today, guys. I hope that uh, uh, you find that helpful. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you know, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. We are pushing into 2022. Uh, so far, the month of January has not been looking good. Uh, we'll see how that spills over to the rest of the year. Inflation continues to be a, an issue. However, if we do, in fact, get it where we put the economy back to work and slow inflation down, who knows? We may be in for a, a um, um, some good opportunities going forward into the rest of the year. We have to also remember that this is an election year, uh, uh, the midterm election, and towards the June, July, August time frame, the pol politicians are going to start doing a whole bunch of stuff, especially the party that's in power, to make it look like they've been very successful in what they've been doing in the past. Now, you know, my, my suggestion is don't be fooled, uh, but at the same time, that could shape what goes on in the market going forward. So until uh, next week, remember, there's nothing wrong with keeping your powder dry while this market is basically flashing signs of weakness. So aloha. God bless everybody.